राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी Jayam Vishnu Pad Parabaham Sabri Vraja Kacharya Astotana Sashmari Zdvayanga Ishila Esi Bhaktivaranta Swami Shila Pahapad Ki Jai Jayam Vishnu Pad Parabaham Sabri Vraja Kacharya Astotana Sata Shushmad Zdvayanga Ishila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasadi Gosami Maharaja Ki Jai Prem Sago Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhanityananda Shidvaita Karad Hara Shrivasadi Goda Bhaktivaranda Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Pramanande Hari Hari Bo Glory to some of the devotees All glory to some of the devotees all glories to some of the devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. All glories to Shri Baba. Namo Vishnu Vadeya Krishna Smashwata Samalita Ramana. Namo Vishnu Vadeya Krishna Smashwata Bhakti Varanta. Samalita Ramana. Namo Vishnu Vadeya Krishna Smashwata Bhakti Varanta. Namo Vishnu Vadeya Krishna Smashwata Bhakti Varanta. Namo Vishnu Vadeya Krishna Smashwata Bhakti Varanta. So today we're reading from Shmad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 3rd Chapter, verse 41. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Gate Mai Yuvam Labdva Gete mai yuvam labdhva Varam mat sadrisham sutam Gramyan bhogan abun jatam Yuvam prapta manoratao Gate mai yuvam labdhva Vram mat sadrisham sutam Gramyam bhogan abunjhatam Yuvam prapta manoratao Prabhus Gate mai yuvam labdhva Vramat sadrisham sutam Gramyam bhojan abum jatam Yuvam prapta manoratao Gate mai yuvam labdva Vramat sadrisham sutam Gramyan bhojan abum jatam Yuvam prapta manoratao Gate mai yuvam labdva Varam mat sadrisham sutam Gramyam bhogam abunjatam Yuvam prapta manoratao Matajis Gate mai yuvam labdva Varam mat sadrisham sutam Gramyam bhogan abunjatam Yuvam prapta manoratao Gate mai luvam labdva Varam mat sadrisham sutam Gramyan bhogan abunjatam Yuvam prapta manodatao Gate mai yuvam labdva Varam mat sadrisham sutam Gramyan bhogan abunjatam Yuvam prapta manodatao Okay, word meanings. Gate mai 
after my departure, Yuvam, both of you, husband and wife, Labdva, after receiving, Varam, the benediction of having a son, Matsadrisham, exactly like me, Sutam, a son, Gramyan, Bhogan, engagement in sex, Abhunjantam, enjoyed, Yuvam, both of you, Prapta, having been achieved, Manoratau, the desired result of your aspirations. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. After you received that benediction and I disappeared, you engaged yourself in sex to have a son like me, and I fulfilled your desire. Please repeat. After you received that benediction and I disappeared, you engaged yourselves in sex to have a son like me, and I fulfilled your desire. Purport. According to the Sanskrit dictionary, Amar Kosh, sex life is called Gramya Dharma. It's also called Gramya Dharma, material desire. But in spiritual life, this Gramya Dharma, the material desire for sex, is not very much appreciated. If one has a tinge of attachment for the material enjoyments of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, one is not niskinchana. But one really should be niskinchana. Therefore, one should be free from the desire to beget a child like Krishna by sexual enjoyment. This is indirectly hinted at in this verse. Oma gyandhimirandhasya gyanjana shlakaya chakshudan militam yinatasmai shri gudavena maha shri chaitanya manobheshtam stapitam yena bhutale svayam rupakadamai ham dadati svapatantikam vande ham shigudo shiyuta patakamalam shri gudun vaishnavam scha shri dupam sagrajatam sahaganaraganatan vitam tam sajivam sadvayetam savadhutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitan Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalata Shri Vishakan Vitam Shcha He Krishna Kuruna Sundu Dinabandu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Godangi Radhe Brinda Veneshvari Brishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakal Padadu Bhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasari Gouda Bhakta Varinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Srila Prabhupada mentions in this purport the word Niskinchan. So he defines it in other places as having nothing. Kinchan means something, and niskinchan means having nothing. So this doesn't mean that a devotee has no material property, or there's nothing under his care. Rather, it's an internal mood, an internal understanding, that one has nothing but Krishna. There are so many things in this material world that we can be attracted to. I could speak for myself. There's a tendency to find Maya's energy alluring. Right? I'm sure I'm not alone in this. So niskinchan means that essentially you have no other attraction, no other engagement but Krishna. 24 hours a day, you're simply absorbed in Krishna. You have no uh, desire for anything else. And this is what we're aspiring to in Krishna consciousness. It's very difficult. But by the process of sadhana bhakti, Krishna mentions in the, uh, in the eighth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, that you know, the highest stage of devotional service is to always think of him, to be niskinchan, to always hear and chant about him, to be naturally attracted to him so that within your heart, within the core of your heart, within your mind, there's nothing but Krishna. But if we can't do this, then we practice the principles of sadhana bhakti as Srila Prabhupada has given us 
in this Krishna consciousness movement. And what this does is this awakens this desire within us. It awakens an attraction for Krishna, an attraction so strong that everything else falls by the wayside. Right? So that's what we're doing. You imagine like a spark of attraction in your heart. All of us here have that spark blazing at different levels. But what we're trying to do is whip it up into a great fire, into an inferno, which is so strong that it burns away the Bhava Sagara, this great ocean of material repeated birth and death, this forest fire of illusion which we are currently in. There's a lecture on Srimad Bhagavatam in Vrindavan where Prabhupada says, that is niskinchan. He's sort of defining niskinchan. Eta sabachadi haya niskinchana ekanta bhavanaya krishnaika sharan in Chaitanya Chartamrita. So we have to become niskinchan. No more material business. No more. That is called niskinchanasya. Who can take this niskinchan? Prabhupada says, Bhagavad bhajanon mukasya. Unless one is eager to serve the Lord, nobody can be niskinchan. Everyone is kinchana, something mine, something mine, something mine. So for such persons, niskinchanasya bhagavad bhajanon mukasya param param jigamishur bhava sagarasya. So this is very beautiful, a very beautiful uh, definition. What Prabhupada is saying here is that, uh, and this is a wonderful verse, this niskinchanasya bhagavad bhajanon mukasya, that if you want to be niskinchan, then you have to have mukha, you have to have a very strong desire for bhagavad bhajan. That's the only thing that can make you niskinchan, right? An attraction to worship Krishna, an attraction to hear and chant about Krishna, an attraction to serve Krishna, an attraction to preach Krishna's glories to everyone you meet, yeah? So this Bhagavan Bhajanon Mukasya, that's what gives you niskinchan. And what does that do? Param Param Jigamashor Bhava Sagarasya. That, that attraction to serve Krishna in the sub, so, so much so, such an intense attraction that you're not attracted to anything else. Then that will allow you to cross over the Bhava Sagara, the ocean of material existence. Um, we see where this verse comes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, as Prabhupada mentions, is that King Pr Prataparudra actually had a very strong desire to associate with Lord Chaitanya. Uh, and one day, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he approached Lord Chaitanya and he said, that my dear Lord Chaitanya, you know, I humbly pray before you that I have something, uh, I have something to request you, something to ask you about, and I want to do it fearlessly, right? So he's very, very delicate in approaching Lord Chaitanya because he knows this is a very, uh, a very unusual request. And then he begins to describe King Pataparudra, what a wonderful Vaishnava he is, and say that he, he would like to meet you. So Lord Chaitanya immediately covered his ears and he said, why are you asking such an undesirable thing from me? Uh, I'm a sannyasi and to meet a king is as dangerous as drinking poison. And that's when Lord Chaitanya quotes this verse, Niskinchanasya Bhagavan Bhagavad Bhajanon Mukashya. Um, and so actually in that verse, the last line is Sandarsham Vishayam Atta Yoshita uh, Yoshitam Hahanta Hahanta Visha Bhakshanto Pyasadhu. That for someone who's trying to be Niskinchanasya, someone who's trying to be only attracted to Krishna and as a result of that, able to cross over material existence, someone who's trying not to take birth again, then to meet a, uh, a woman or a king or someone who's, who's materially engaged in a mood of sense gratification, Prabhupada makes that point, uh, then for him, ha hanta, ha hanta, right? This is actually an expression of lamentation or great um, anxiety. Ha hanta, ha hanta! Right? Like it's super intense. It's very, very full of fear and anxiety that uh, this hanta visha bhakshanto pyasadu, it's worse, it's asadu, it's worse than drinking poison. You see, so not only should we aspire to be niskinchan, not only should we aspire to only worship Krishna and be absorbed in Krishna and be so attracted to Krishna that nothing else is interesting to us, but we also have to be fearful of material existence. Prabhupada points out that, uh, especially for us Westerners, our, you know, our major problem is we're not afraid of maya enough, right? There's a tendency, yes, we like Krishna, we're attracted to Krishna, but you know, a little bit of maya on the side, that's not such a big deal, 
right? And little Maya never hurt anybody, right? <laughs> but if we look at the culture of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees, and the culture, really, the high standard of Vaishnav culture that it's expected of us, is there's a fear of material absorption. There's a fear of Maya. So much so that it's ha-hanta, right? It's, it's actually Lord Chaitanya is terrified to meet with King Prataparudra. And so when Sarvabhama Bhattacharya heard this, he was a little bit you know, shaken up. Lord, Lord Chaitanya told him that if you ask me this again, I'll leave and I won't come back, right? <laughs> so it's a, Lord Chaitanya set the bar very, very high. He didn't even want to hear about meeting a so-called materialistic person. Yeah? Um, so interestingly enough, Sarvabhama Bhattacharya says he left and he was meditating on the subject. Now somehow or other, perhaps by Krishna's supreme arrangement, um, what happened was, uh, at that time, uh, Ramananda Roy, who was a governor, a very highly positioned politician, he had met Lord Chaitanya in South India, and he had actually asked King Prataparudra for permission to come and, you know, to, to give up his position in the government, and to come and just absorb himself totally in Lord Chaitanya, in the pastimes of Krishna, the deity of Jagannath, and leave everything else aside. We see that Ramananda Roy is an example of this Bhagavad Bhajanon Mukashya. He has a very, very strong desire to absorb in Krishna Bhajan, right? And therefore, uh, such a strong desire that he's leaving everything else behind. Ramananda Roy is Niskinchana. He was a very powerful, powerful person, very wealthy, very respected, and he cares nothing for it. And he approached King Prataparudra and asked permission to retire. And not only did King Prataparudra, he, he gave him permission, but he also gave him a full pension. He gave him a free ride. He gets to live the rest of his life peacefully, absorbed in Krishna's service. So King Prataparudra, <clears throat> he actually understood, understands a great secret in devotional service, that he understands the power of serving the Vaishnavas the power of pleasing Krishna by pleasing Krishna's devotee. And therefore, he, d he rendered this service to Ramananda Roy. So it mentions that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> King Prataparudra, he came back to Jagannath Puri, he arrived in Jagannath Puri, and Ramananda Roy was with him. And when Ramananda Roy, in fact, normally people go visit Lord Jagannath first. That's the, uh, you know, that's the typical um, practice in Jagannath Puri. But Ramananda Roy was so ecstatic and so desirous of seeing Lord Chaitanya that he immediately ran to him and embraced Lord Chaitanya, falling at his feet. And Lord Chaitanya embraced him and they cried tears of ecstasy. And all the Vaishnavas were wondering, who is this person? It's so amazing, you know, what's going on here? And what um, Ramananda Roy immediately began glorifying King Prataparudra and saying how, how the, re the service that he's rendered to him. And Lord Chaitanya, immediately his heart changed and, um, and he thought to, and he said that, you know, anyone who pleases the Vaishnavas will, immediate, will attain the mercy of Krishna, right? So this is a, a sort of foreshadowing. Um, so I'm going to read here a quote from Srila Prabhupada regarding attraction to Maya, etc., as well as sex life, which is the topic of this section. <clears throat> Krishna is very merciful to his sincere devotees. But also we have to remember that maya is very strong. Therefore we always have to be engaged in serving Krishna. This is uh, uh, from the, I believe it's from a um, lecture on the Srimad Bhagavatam. At every moment we should be doing this or that service for Krishna's transcendental pleasure. If we do not remember this, then maya is right there to grab us. It all depends on our leaning towards Krishna or towards maya. If you lean towards Krishna, you will be in Krishna consciousness. And if you lean towards Maya, then you'll be captivated by material nature. Krishna and Maya are just like light and shadow, which are directly next to one another. If you move a little this way, you are in light, and there is no question of shadow. But if you move a little the other way, you are in darkness. So if we, we remember to always be engaged in Krishna's service, then there will be no maya and everything will be all right. Please always remember this great secret of advancement in Krishna consciousness. So that was in uh, 1969 from a lecture. 
So here what Prabhupada is saying, this is the great secret of, of advancement, is to keep ourselves always engaged in Krishna. Right? You keep yourself in the light. And this is, you know, essentially what our struggle is in Krishna consciousness, is to let go of the material attachments, let go of other attractions and other things, and keep ourselves always in the fire of Krishna consciousness. Then Prabhupada says everything will be all right. That's a pretty powerful statement, you know. Basically, we just have that faith to keep ourselves in Krishna's service, and then everything will be all right, everything will be wonderful. Right? What, what truly matters in life will be accomplished. You're situated properly. You don't have to fear. Ma shuchaha. Just be engaged completely in Krishna's service. Mm. So we see here, uh, now it's very interesting. Mm. So also what Lord Chaitanya said regarding Srila Ramananda Roy uh, and King Prataparudra, he quoted this wonderful verse. Um, well, first of all, he says, My dear Ramananda Roy, you are the foremost of all devotees of Krishna, therefore whoever loves you is certainly a very fortunate person. Because the king has shown so much love for you, Lord Krishna will certainly accept him. And then he quotes this very wonderful verse, Ye me bhakta jana parta, na me bhaktas te jinaha, mad bhaktanam te ye bhaktas, te me bhakta tma mataha. Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, this is from the Adi Purana, those who are my direct devotees are actually not my devotees, but those who are the devotees of my servant are actually my devotees. So this is also quoted in the Lagu Bhagavatamrita. And so we see that King Prataparudra, he has this also, this niskinchanasya quality of always by trying to be absorbed in Krishna. He is the king, just like Ramananda Roy is the governor, but he's even higher in a higher position. He's surrounded by wealth, he's surrounded by beautiful women, he's surrounded by so many different things. And yet his only desire, his burning desire, is to associate with Lord Chaitanya. Now, his desire is so strong that at a certain point he says that my entire kingdom is useless, right? Like all these things that he has, it's not just he's giving lip service or something, or speaking like a good devotee is supposed to speak. No, this is a genuine realization that all of this material wealth, all of this power and position, for him, it's really useless. It means nothing to him. He has no desire to enjoy it whatsoever. Rather, his desire is so strong at one point that he tells the devotees that if I don't, if I'm not able to associate with Lord Chaitanya, then I will leave my body, right? And Lord Chaitanya's reply is essentially that because he has this proper attitude of being the servant of the servant of the devotees, then he will eventually get the mercy of Krishna. You see, so as we develop this niskinchan attitude, as we engage in this Bhagavad Bhajanon Mukashya, we also have to have the proper attitude. We can't be striving for power, position, prestige, for wealth, fame, beauty, you know, all these qualities. We have to only desire to serve Krishna as the humble servant of his representatives, the humble servant of the Vaishnavas. Yeah? That can really be our only motivation and devotional service. That's how, that's our internal culture, how we have to see ourselves as we strive forward in Krishna consciousness. It's how we relate to others. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> continuing on this, this theme of sex life as mentioned here, this is another quote from Prabhupada as mentioned in the, the Prabhupada Lila. So there's a certain individual asking, it was a yoga student, and he was asking Srila Prabhupada, saying that, you know, I have sex desire, what am I supposed to do? And, uh, and Prabhupada says, what? You? Everybody. And birds, beasts, demigods, the binding force is sex. The material life means sex desire. If you have strong sex desire, pray to Krishna. Know that this is the attack of Maya. Pray and Maya will go, go away. You cannot fight with Maya by your own energy. Maya is presenting herself more beautiful than Krishna, but Krishna is more beautiful. So there must be this, this also... In other words, the, this issue is that Maya, to us, in our conditioned state, looks more beautiful than Krishna. But this is not the reality. The reality is that Krishna is more beautiful than Maya. Krishna is actually more attractive than Maya. But we have to be willing to absorb ourselves in Krishna in order to experience that. This is the Param Drishtva Nivartate. In other words, when struggling with the sex life or struggling with eating, sleeping, and defending, as Prabhupada mentions in the purport, 
not only do we have to develop this niskinchen, not only do we have to absorb ourselves totally in Krishna and the right attitude as well, but we have to actually uh, develop a taste for Krishna. We have to actually absorb ourselves in such a way that we begin to taste pleasure in Krishna Kata. We begin to taste pleasure in Krishna service and preaching Krishna consciousness. This is essential. We have to actually see the beauty of Krishna to such a degree that Maya does not look attractive to us anymore. Okay? So, <clears throat> we see that uh, this is actually the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. So maybe you might notice with this Pratapa Rudra pastime, I'm trying to sort of like build up into the Rathiyatra mood. <laughs> There's a meaning to this. So, we see that when what happened, you know, essentially after this interaction with King Pratapa Rudra, King Pratapa Rudra is so eager, this eagerness was going so strong, he asked Sarvabhambhattacharya, when is the Snana Yatra ceremony, right? Because he wanted, Sarvabhambhattacharya had come up with a certain plan. And the plan was that during the Rathiyatra ceremony, Lord Chaitanya will dance in ecstasy. And when he's overcome in this consciousness, then you should dress humbly as a Vaishnava and approach him and offer prayers and chant shlokas glorifying Krishna. And in this way, you will be able to have the association of Lord Chaitanya. So King Pachaparudra is very eager and he asks Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya, when is Snana Yatra? And Snana Yatra said, or Sarvabhaum Bhattacharya said, it's in three days, right? And so then it, Lord, the Chaitanya Charitamrita describes how Lord Chaitanya was at this Snana Yatra ceremony and he was experiencing Ananda Haridaya, which means that his heart was absolutely filled to the brim with ecstasy as he was watching the beautiful form of Jagannath being bathed. And, uh, and then, then after this, Lord Jagannath went into seclusion. And then it was the opposite. Lord Chaitanya was feeling great separation from the deity of Lord Jagannath. So eventually the Rathiyatra ceremony began. Lord Chaitanya was dancing in ecstasy and he retired to the Gundicha garden. Uh, and there, you know, that deep absorption continued. We see he was absorbed during the Snanayatra ceremony. And similarly, he never ceased for one moment being absorbed in the beauty of Krishna, being a ta tasting the wonderful uh, pleasure of hearing the glories of Krishna. And therefore, as he was dancing in ecstasy, uh, he became exhausted and he retired to the Gundicha garden. And there, we could see this pastime as Lord Chaitanya is so absorbed in hearing this nectarian verses of Krishna's Srimad Bhagavatam pastimes that he more or less forgets all external consciousness. This is how deeply Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is absorbed in the higher taste. You see, so this is an example to us also. We are to again leave aside all other interests, all other tastes, and absorb as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the wonderful pastimes of Krishna. So we see that uh, King Pataparudra. Now it's very interesting that when all the devotees had come from Bengal, his, his primary absorption was to serve the Vaishnavas. Not only did he serve Ramananda Roy, but when all the devotees came from Bengal, he served them as well, right? He made all the arrangements for their food. He made all the arrangements for where they're going to stay, right? Maybe Bhaktivatsa Alpabhu has experience with this, right? When guests come, then immediately there's the frantic, uh, you know, how you're going to pr take care of them, etc. So this goes back very long distance, right? <laughs> this is a very ancient... Uh, situation that when guests arrive one is considering how to take care of them so King Pataparudra is the king he used all of the facility of the kingdom to care for and to facilitate the Vaishnavas in their uh, pilgrimage to see the Rathiyatra and to associate with Lord Chaitanya so after doing that uh, then we see that Lord or King Pataparudra he comes to the Gundicha garden and he's dressed as a Vaishnava. He's removed again Niskinchan, he's removed all of his the trappings of a king, all the jewelry, the turban, etc. And he's coming just dressed as a simple Vaishnava and you know, just as you're dressed, right? With a tilak and everything. And so as he came in, the first thing he did is he went to all these different Vaishnavas that he had served and he began paying, praying to them and asking for their permission to go to Lord Chaitanya. And then after receiving their blessings, he, Lord Chaitanya was laying on sort of a raised dais. He climbed up to the dais and he began, it says there, expertly massaging Lord Chaitanya's legs. 
And so Lord Chaitanya, of course, was absorbed in transcendental bliss uh, completely in an uh, enlightened state of consciousness. And yet, as he was massaging, King Pachaparudra began chanting the Gopi Gita, the Jayati Te Dikam, these verses, 20 or so verses. And Lord Chaitanya became thrilled with ecstasy. He was tasting the beauty of these verses. And he immediately rose and embraced King Pataparudra. And in that embrace, both of them were feeling transcendental bliss. And King Pataparudra was feeling transcendental ecstasy in the arms of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So by the grace of the Vaishnavas in reciprocation for his attitude and as well as his intense absorption in Krishna's service and his renunciation, he achieved the embrace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so in one sense, we can see this with ourselves that if we develop these same qualities, the same attitude of service, the same absorption in Krishna's pastimes, and if we develop this same level of renunciation to where we're interested in nothing but Krishna, in Krishna's service and the service of the spiritual master, then we ourselves will feel the embrace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that embrace is liberation. At the time of death, then we will leave this this terrible material world behind and leave aside this, this cycle of birth and death, this samsara which we are locked in. And Prabhupada mentions in the previous purport uh, that to attain liberation you must be niskinshan. There's no other way. You have to have no other material desire. You have to be absorbed in Krishna to the, in the, at this very deep level of love and affection to where everything else seems pale. Okay? Thank you very much. Are there any comments or questions? No? Okay. We'll end like maybe five minutes early. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. 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 Yeah.